So setting a goal is really easy to do. You could probably set one right now in just a couple of seconds if I asked you to. Achieving that goal is a much more complicated issue, as I'm sure you are aware of for yourself. This is depending on a variety of factors that will determine if achieving that goal is easy or, as we often experience, really hard. But people who set goals are more successful. They're more likely, even if they don't achieve their goals, to create more progress. And if you think about that, that makes sense, right? If we're intentional about something, if it's top of mind for us, we're more likely to work on it and get closer to some outcome, even if we don't achieve that goal. And this leads to a whole slew of psychological benefits, feeling more confident about ourselves, empowered, uh, believing in ourselves, creating more autonomy. So my question for you is, did you set goals for yourself this year? Did they feel hard to achieve? And maybe you gave up, gave up on them as a result. Well, if that's the case, this video is for you. Or maybe you didn't set any goals this year and you're thinking, uh, okay, that description of why goals are helpful is maybe important. Maybe you're interested in setting some goals for, for the next year. This video is also for you. We are going to do a year in review and talk a little bit about goal setting and motivation. I'm Dr. Kit Slyes, life coach and licensed psychologist, here to inspire perfectionists and anxious achievers to feel calm and confident while holding clear boundaries. And this is what, so goal setting for perfectionists is particularly relevant because oftentimes perfectionists will give up on goals when it feels like it's not going as planned, even to the littlest degree. It's sort of like, oh, I set that goal for myself to work out five times a week and I miss one day a week. I can't do it. I'm just going to not work out, out at all next week as opposed to, oh, I only worked out one day last week or two days. Okay, that's not what I said I was going to do but I can still continue to try harder next week. So the end of year that we're in right now, we're, you know, early December here, is a perfect time to review the year behind us and review any goals that we set, progress that we made or didn't make. Or if you didn't set goals uh, or reach them, we can review just challenges and successes that we can apply to the next year. So, so whether you set goals for yourself or not in 2023, you can still do a year in review. We're going to talk about, um, after you do that year in review, how to just use these last couple of weeks of the year to build up motivation and momentum uh, to going into 2024 and to gather some data. This year in review is data that we can use to set us up for success in 2024. We are going to use a concept called mental contrasting. Normally, we use mental contrasting in goal setting and achieving goals, but we're actually going to use it retrospectively to look at the year behind us. Um, and again, we'll, we'll use this information for setting 2024 goals, which I will talk about in a later video, which I will link to once that video is completed. So. The mental contrasting, what that does is you, when we're using it for goal setting, we look at, we visualize the outcome going the way perfectly as planned. We visualize that. That creates motivation. Um, but the mental contrasting is not just positive thinking. It's not like, oh, if I just think positively about it, it'll all work out. If I can visualize it, it will all work out. No, the mental contrasting, the reason why it's so effective is because it's realistic. It, it also has us plan ahead for barriers and pitfalls that we're going to see um, from ourselves. And then how do we plan for those so that we can still get to that ideal vision or at least close to it? So with our year in review, we're going to look at, we're going to contrast the successes and the challenges. 
So what I would propose to you is I'm going to give you some prompts here and just go ahead and write them down. Um, and you can pause the video and do them or um, come. you can do it after the video has ended. But so as I mentioned, the first thing that we're going to do is look at your successes for this year. So think about what goals did you reach or what even small actions did you take toward a goal? So even if you didn't read a, reach a goal, we're still going to count as a success, something that you did that moved the needle towards that goal. Um, when thinking about successes, you can also just think about things that just went well this year that you want to celebrate. The reason why we do this from a mental contrasting perspective is because it creates motivation. When we celebrate our successes, we feel motivated as opposed to discouraged. Motivation doesn't come out of thin air. So then once you have an idea of what were some successes, and just take a few moments, like think about Take a couple of minutes to think of as many successes as you can think of. And then let's look at your top three to five successes. And then what I want you to think about for those successes is what were the causal factors in those successes? And again, we're going to do the same thing where I want you to think of as many causal factors as you can. And we're going to narrow those down to the top three to five overall. So causal factors. Um, and actually, what I want you to think about with these causal factors is what behaviors did you do specifically? So, yeah, I'm sure that there were outside external factors as well. And it's OK to list those down if that feels good. But we want to focus on what you have control over, because that's what we have control over when we're setting goals, right, and achieving them. So when you think about the causal factors that you had control over, think about things like, did you prioritize something? Did you prioritize a behavior? Did you set aside time in your day or create a routine where you focused on something? Did you use something for accountability? Did you engage a friend or somebody who is a cheerleader and told them, hey, I'm working on this thing and it's going really well, or here's what I want to do for myself and I'll tell you about it later. Let's check in about it later. Did you prioritize things that just filled your cup? Did you prioritize social time? Did you prioritize a hobby? Maybe have nothing to do with any goals that you set for yourself or things that you want to achieve in different areas of your life. Um, but by filling your cup, you had energy to go to the gym or you were able to put your mind into a different world so that you felt refreshed when you came back to your career or your job or you know whatever it is that you're wanting to excel in you felt refreshed from social time or hobbies and could come back to that area of your life with a energized uh, energy did you start healthy habits that helped you stay on track in other areas so similarly did you pick up exercise and maybe that doesn't relate to your goals or something like that, but you've had energy to work on things. Did you learn something new? Did you, um, let's see what else. Did you create a, a, just a way for yourself to stay on track, a tracking system um, or writing down your progress, writing down your goals? Like what did you do that contributed to successes, things that felt good, any progress on goals or goals reached. And again, list out as many as you can take, like a couple of minutes, two, three, four, five minutes to list out as many as you can. And then I want you to just identify the top three to five that you felt like had the biggest impact on your, on the things that you felt most successful about this year. Okay. So that's this side of our mental contrasting. And now we're going to look at the things that didn't go so well. We're going to contrast that with the things that didn't go so well. So similar, we're going to just identify things that you felt like didn't go so well. And then we're going to look at the behaviors, your behaviors specifically, that maybe contributed to that. So uh, things that didn't go so well, you could look at, you know, were there attempts to reach a goal that didn't go as planned? Were there things that just felt really hard? What were the challenges that you faced this year? 
um, moments in your life that just felt difficult, that you felt down and out even. So this could, you could identify the emotions around that as well. The purpose of this is not to dwell in self-loathing or take on a woe is me, all is lost attitude. The purpose of this is to use this information to plan for next year in a loving way with self-compassion. So in the same way that we looked at our successes, we looked at the successes and then our behaviors that contributed to those successes. We also want to look at what behaviors contributed to challenges. This is not to blame yourself. When you look at these behaviors, I want you to take a stance of self-compassion, but it's also about being real with ourselves too, you know? Um, if we don't identify our things that are tripping us up, how can we change those? Okay. So some examples of things that maybe contributed to your challenges. Did you lack knowledge or skills on a topic maybe, and didn't figure out a way to ask for help or find those resources to, to build up that skills or knowledge? Did you set a goal and just forget about it? Oh, set, set a goal for this year. That felt great. Gonna file it away and not even think about it. Did you choose other behaviors that left you feeling drained as opposed to filling your cup? Anybody engaging in doom scrolling? I think we all do that, right? But we can acknowledge, hey, that doesn't feel the greatest. Is there a way that I can limit that even if I can't cut it out completely, right? Did you um, listen to people who aren't aligned with your values or who are just naysayers and leave you feeling depleted and unmotivated to, to work on something? So think about, um, again, list out as many as you can think of over a couple of minutes, but then again, identify those top three to five that you feel like really take you away from the things that you want to be prioritizing in your life. And I think some big indicators there for the most prominent ones are, um, you know, things that maybe you do daily or consistently that you sort of have a habit of that consistently take you away from feeling good or from working on a goal or behavior that you want to be doing. So your job for just today is just to reflect on your answers. Um, we'll be, we're going to be using these in a later video here. We're setting our 2024 goals. What I don't want you to do, again, I want to reiterate for the, the behaviors that you had that contributed to your challenges, I don't want you to go into a place of self-blaming for that. This is, we're just stating the facts here. You are not a bad person because you doom scrolled or spent a lot of time on social media or didn't pick up an exercise routine you meant to. It doesn't make you a bad person. It makes you human. And that's okay. So if you find yourself going into any self-loathing or shame or self-doubt about that, um, I just want you to say something to yourself that feels good. Something like, you know what? I make mistakes, but I can still try really hard. I make mistakes. I'm human and I can still be kind to myself moving forward here. Okay. So if you didn't reach goals this year or set goals, I also just want you to think about, well, what can you do with the rest of 2023? Maybe just doing this year in review is a goal you set for yourself that you can check it off and say, look at this thing that I did for myself and I can feel good about that. Looking at our successes, I'll say it again, creates motivation. You could also revisit goals that you set in 2023 and either gave up on or didn't achieve and start working on them now. Just do one small thing for it or double down on it. Because again, I will say motivation is created. It doesn't just come out of nowhere. I mean, it does... Sometimes we feel like we're motivated out of nowhere, but we're not going to feel motivated consistently if we are not intentional about uh, taking action and working on our mindset. That's where motivation comes, comes from. So if we're just sitting around not doing anything, you can't count on motivation striking. Motivation comes from doing, it comes from celebrating successes, and it comes from feeling like you're making choices that are aligned with your values or what's important to you.
So for the rest of 2023, I want you to either just do this year in review and count that as a success and think about, hey, this feels really good. Or pick one, one um, behavior that contributed to your challenges and think about ways that you could just make a small change to that. Can you be on social media or doom scroll for five minutes less a day? Pick one behavior that contributed to your successes and think about how you're going to double down on that. Just, just even in this month, we're not, we're not thinking about 2024 yet. I just want you to create a little bit of momentum and motivation for yourself before we get to 2024 and setting those goals. So I hope you found this video useful today to help specifically, I think, increase your confidence um, moving forward here. And I will see you next time as we talk about setting goals for 2024. Bye for now.